Okay, I'm ready now to tackle this wiring harness. Uh, you know, there's a lot of wires here, but I've, I've done a lot of studying, and I think I got it, I got it all figured out. I'm pretty sure I do. So um, I'm going to break this thing down. We're going to spread it out, and we're going to tackle it section by section. I'm going to include everything I can on these videos to make sure that uh, it's kind of self-explanatory. I've got two sons that don't understand electronics completely. So, uh, you know, the part of the reason I'm actually doing this is just so that, that we walk, we end up with this thing that that they understand kind of kind of what's going on. But um, ultimately, what I'm what I need is to I want to clean up this wiring harness. There's a lot of wires on here that we are not going to use, so we've got to get rid of those wires. That'll be part of the pieces, deleting wires. But ultimately, also, is we're trying to create what's called a four-wire standalone harness. And what that means is once this stuff is cleaned up and put back on the engine. There's going to be four wires required to hook to the vehicle to make that engine run. Now, there's additional wires that you're going to want to need, you know, tack and that type of thing. So, there's additional wires. We'll go over those as well as we learn about them. And then, um, but at least we're going to get this thing down to a four-wire system, and uh, we'll make it work. Okay, before we start cutting wires, we got we got some decisions we got to make, some pretty important decisions, and it all hinges on where you're going to locate your PCM. Um, and there's two approaches. One is like the, the standard default for this Vortec truck 5.3 engine is the wiring harness comes out of here and your PCM is located over here on the driver's side of the engine. If that's what you can still go with, then you're going you're to follow what I'm going to call approach A. If you want to do a custom solution where you want to, and, and I was thinking about doing this myself, you want to locate, let's say, the PCM on your firewall back here, then that's going to be approach B. It's going to take a, a whole different uh, method of, of getting that wire harness together. And let me just describe that for a minute. And, and I've actually gone back and forth. I was going to do it here and then I said, no, I'm going to put my PCM on the firewall. But then I went out and looked and I'm going to show you that in just a second. I'm going to look. Show, there's no room on my firewall, even on a big old flat Jeep. Um, there's no room on the firewall for that PCM. So I actually have now gone back to just relocating. I've got a good spot for it up here on one of the fender wells. And um, and so that's the approach we're going to do. But let me just talk about approach B for just a second. Approach B is where you're going to have your um, PCM in the back. And you're actually going to take your existing bundle of wires, completely take it apart. And you're going to think, oh, I can't, I can't put it all back together. But then the, the key to that is taking a socket for, let's say, your uh, camshaft position sensor. You're going to actually plug that into your camshaft camshaft position sensor and then you're going to run that wire the way you want to to get it back to this area. Ultimately in that approach you're going to be cut you're going to be shorting shortening a lot of wires and you're going to be lengthening a lot of wires, but it's not something that difficult to do. It's once you understand the overall approach it's it's uh it's just a matter of going through the motion and, and uh, having a good plan. Back to back to approach A. Approach A is where we come out here we're going to locate this thing here. Here we're just going to take our wiring harness, we'll lay it out on a table we're going to unbundle it all, but we're going to leave it all basically in its same little little small uh, runs and, and bundles. We're going to loosen it all up. We're going to take out the wires we don't want, and we're going to put them back in. So before I do that, um, and then ultimately, I th what's going to be neat is I've seen people where they shave they shave the top of their uh, intake. Not sure if I like that idea. My pro what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this cover. I like the little covers. I'm going to shave off this Vortec, and I'm going to put Rowdy across the front. Either that, or I'm going to see if I can find a company that uh, custom makes these covers and get one custom made for with Rowdy on it. Because I think that'll be kind of neat. But it'll be black and have some red on it. It'll, it'll really match the, the whole project. But uh, let me go out. Let's go out to the Jeep. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about on uh, location of your PCM. It's, 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 that's the number one decision you got to make. Okay, so here's a look underneath the hood of this Jeep CJ7. I'm going to put that motor in. And uh, that motor will actually st uh, sit about the same location as this motor, so we're working in the same place. That, if I go with the approach A, the harness will come out here. My original thought was to locate the PCM on this side. I thought that was pretty cool. Then I said, well, wait a minute, I might be able to put it on the firewall somewhere. But there's no room on the firewall except for under the battery, which is way over there. And that puts it down really low and really subject to moisture and stuff. So I really found a really good spot when this canister comes off and uh, the ignition box comes off that uh, I'm going to mount it right on the back side of this inner wheel well. And uh, it'll just come right off here and go there. And I'll actually locate the, uh, the fuse block, the new fuse block here as well. And then anything that needs to go in the Jeep will go very short run so again we're gonna go with approach A on this this build because uh, it just fits the vehicle a lot better all right we just spent a couple hours laying this thing out on the table and by doing so it made it look a lot 
simpler than what it did in the box. Um, up here is more towards the front. We kind of laid it out in the way you would see it on the engine. This is the front. This is more in the back. This has got like O2 sensors and stuff like that. And uh, here's the fuse box and then here's the PCM. And uh, we went ahead and labeled all of the uh, all the sensors. The green ones are ones that we know we're going to keep and these yellow ones most likely will disappear once we start simplifying this and taking some stuff out. So now I'm going to let my dad dive deeper into all these little sections and show you what it's all about. Okay, so to give you a little closer look at some of these sections, this is again kind of the front of the engine and uh, we got the throttle position sensor, alternator connection, IAC connection, EVAP, which is going to go away. This is the injectors and the uh, coil pack um, harness connector here. This is going to go down the driver side of the engine. Then it actually circles back around in the passenger side of the engine. Cylinders 2, 4, 6, and 8 injectors and, and um, coil actually come up from the back side of the engine, come this direction. And we have our EGR valve connection. We're going to get rid of our EGR, so that'll go away. And then going down underneath the engine along the front and then running down the passenger side along the bottom. Um, and actually before we get there, we have a temperature sensor that's on the actually up on the uh, front driver side of the engine and then there's a ground connection and then it dips down under the engine and goes all the way to the back and we'll get to that section next. So continue on this is that lower section so it's on the lower part of the engine back toward uh, the starter on the passenger side. There's actually two AC compressor connections those will be disappearing. We've actually got the starter positive wire that, that needs to stay. The oil level sensor uh, everyone's taking those out so I'll I'll get rid of this wire, but I'm going to leave that sensor in there just, um, just to plug the hole. And then we have a crank position sensor. So that's what that will what'll follow down the passenger side of the engine. Okay, we flipped the camera around on the other side. We're kind of going down the driver's side. The front of the engine is this way. So here across, um, really across the center of the intake manifold is your knock sensor uh, connection. And on the, this is to be the back of the uh, manifold. This is your map sensor connection. Coming down kind of the back center of the, of the uh, intake manifold, you got your oil pressure, camshaft, camshaft position sensor, and another grounding piece. You'll notice I got this blue. What this is, is underneath here is the bolt that it requires to mount this back to the block. Okay, continuing down that same leg, um, we have the neutral safety switch, which is only for automatic transmission, so that's yellow and going away. We have the front O2 sensor. This is what I'm going to keep. We'll keep that and then the rest of this stuff is all transmission related. Uh, here's the rear O2 sensor we're going to get rid of, the transmission general connection and the uh, vehicle speed sensor. None of that stuff is going to relate to our new transmission so all of this stuff's going to go. The only thing we're going to keep is this guy. Okay once again I've changed camera position so again we're at the rear of the engine, rear of the board, you know the front of the engine is that direction. Uh, most of the, I believe this leg goes down the passenger side of the transmission. Um, so like this, this was not connected originally to anything on my engine. Uh, I'm not really sure what these are, but we'll be able to ident identify these as we start removing wires. Same thing with this, not connected, and even this one not connected. But these are so long, they run down toward the transmission. The only thing I'm intending to keep here is this, this is my front O2 sensor on the passenger side. We'll be keeping this leg. This is the fuse block that came with the, that comes with your truck. And we'll ultimately, they, you know, all these wires like this may go to the inside wiring. This might be your dash wiring and that type of stuff. The only thing we're interested in is this middle block. It's called the C2 block. We'll be shortly, we'll be taking this out and just basically discarding all of this piece. So we'll clean that up real shortly. We got two, uh, three other connectors here. One's a C100, a C152, and a C153. Those, um, we'll deal with those in a little bit. And then the PCM, the PCM actually has a red and a blue connector. We'll get those pulled off and uh, just take this away for a minute and we'll be doing some things in that. So uh, are, are you ready to you ready to start cutting some wires? No, you're not. I am, but uh, we got some more things to talk about. Okay, so the reason that we're not ready to cut wires yet is because we've got to do some research. And um, all the steps that I'm going to take will apply to what you're doing, but you may make different decisions during some of these steps. Now, do yourself a favor. you got to go to lt1swap.com. 
Brandon has done a fantastic job of providing tons of information um, for you to look at, peruse through. You're going to learn a lot about the wiring harnesses. You do that. I've been through it several times, probably three different times, pulling down documents, getting those organized. I've actually put them in this notebook and, um, and marked them up. So I'm about to, in just a second, I'm going to actually go and let you see the things that I did. Um, and actually also went uh, his Facebook page has uh, some step-to-step -step procedures and that's what I'm going to show instead of via pictures and text I'm going to do basically his steps uh, via video maybe maybe make it a little better and then I'm actually taking his steps and I've made uh, a set of procedures with some diagrams and stuff like that so I've got a couple of documents I've created to help pull together all that information but other than that all the information is out there on Brandon's site, lt1swap.com. Unbelievably what he's put together. It's a great help. All the different engine sizes and, and years and stuff like that. And you've got to pull down certain charts based on your, your needs. So start there and then we're going we're gonna to continue. Okay, so here's a quick look at all the notes that I kind of pulled off lt1swap.com, except for this first little piece is actually something I put together. Um, this is step-by-step -step procedures that I'm going to follow while... Um, while making this video and share with you guys. So I basically got it outlined what we're going to do with some pic sample pictures of what uh, this is from Brandon's page. Um, so we got that all together. I'll be following that here in a minute. Uh, downloaded from, from LT1Swap.com is um, this is that fuse block connector that's part of the fuse block that we're going to we're going to simplify and uh, it basically I I've, I've went ahead and made this little form up and and determine which ones I wanted wires I want to delete and which ones we're still going to keep ultimately we're going to cut all the wires off but some of those get reused the ones that say we need are basically ones we're going to reuse and we're going to reroute somewhere else so that's the the C2 block and then also here's the second page of that also there's right there next to that is um I showed on the previous video uh, the C1 connector, C152, and C153. Ultimately, these we're going to just cut these connectors off. Some of these wires get reused. They'll be apparent more down the road. We're not going to try and track them right now, um, but uh, that'll get simplified there. And then finally, again, there's different versions of this. This is when you go looking at the PCM. The PCM has two major connections, a blue connector, which is this blue, and also one in red. And what this does, it shows you every pin out, what each pin, pin 13 is your cruise control engagement signal. Well, we're not have cruise control ever, so that one gets uh, blocked out. Brandon, what he did is he highlighted all the ones in yellows to delete. In addition to that, I went back down through here and found ones that I knew I didn't want as well, such as... Um, let me find a good example. Um, right here is the UART serial data drive-by wire only. I don't have drive-by wire. I got drive-by cable. So both of this pin 14 and 15, I'm going to get. I'm going to depin those and get rid of that wiring. So I went through. You can see my notes here. I went through. Not only did I everywhere there's a yellow comment, um, I went ahead and put an X next to, and then I went back through this exercise. Here's transmission fluid pressure sensor. I don't have an automatic transmission, so those get X'd. So everywhere I have an X for these pins, and over here the the X is next to it over here. We're getting rid of those. This A indicates that that's we're actually going to add a wire to pin 42. That's what that means. So that's uh, we got that for the blue and the red connector. And then um, and there's some more details that I've uh, downloaded. And then as far as we're going to take, we're going to get rid of that old big Chevrolet GM fuse block. And we're going to go down to basically a four fuse system. And based on some pictures that I saw, I kind of redrew this. Uh, this is how I'm going to wire mine. This is basically the same thing the way Brandon wires his, but I flip-flopped um, this to a different fuse just so it, it, uh, it was easier to diagram. But I, I went ahead and diagrammed that out. This is exactly how I'm going to wire mine, as well as the pink wires are your keyed hot wires, and uh, they'll come into here, but they come from a bunch of different places. And then what you've got to do is you've got to group some of these wires together and put them back into one, and it'll go to fuse two. And these all these get grouped together in this fashion, go to fuse three, and same thing with fuse four. So this I put this wiring diagram together as well, and. Um, this is how we're going to combine all of our hot wires. And then there's just some extra uh, pictures and stuff from the website on how you how you wire all that stuff. So anyway, um, you got to start got to start there. If you're not you're just you're wasting your time with research. And um, so I think we'll end there for today and then 
tomorrow we will probably start actually doing some clipping grouping wires we'll go back to that board and we'll actually go to a certain area and we'll tackle it um, but with uh, with a purpose so I hope you decide to keep following along and uh, we'll see more about that next time Jack it up.